Hello and welcome to my video blog. My name is Elle um, and I am a realtor with Santa Fe Properties here in beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, many of you already know me, you're familiar with my work. <laughs> and um, so I'm just bringing to you more information that I hope you will find helpful as often as I am able to do it. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what to expect at closing. I have a lot of first time home buyers um, and maybe not your first time, but you might not do it a whole lot. So you're curious about what is going to be um, your closing costs. And so I just kind of wanted to run through the categories of what will be included in your settlement statement and sort of what we talk about as closing costs. Um, so looking at it from the buyer's perspective, uh, first of all, the debit or what you're going to be paying is your sales price, so the property price. Um, then you'll have to pay your HOA dues if there is any, and any HOA fees that are associated um, with the property. Uh, you will also have to pay any loan costs if you have a loan. Um, you will have to pay any title charges as well, but that will depend on what was agreed upon in the purchase contract. So title costs include things like the policy itself, the title commitment, any recording fees associated with the title, um, any closing fees that the title company charges, and also any um, deletions of exceptions. And we can go into that. I've written about that on my blog, so that's a kind of a separate topic. But those would be um, increasing the title insurance. Um, so those would be all individual and separate charges. And again, that would depend on how it was negotiated between the buyer and the seller in your purchase contract. Um, the last thing that would be a cost to the buyer, um, just again, this is in general, general expectations, would be your homeowner's insurance. So that's something you will also have to come to the table with. Um, the credits, meaning what the buyer will be getting, will be a the credit for the deposit of the earnest money that was given. You will also have a credit for your loan if you're assuming one. Um, and finally, for the taxes um, that were due and should be paid by the seller for the period that he or she owned the property. So on the flip side of this, so the closing statement for a seller um, looks very, very similar, obviously, um, but may have a few different things. First of all, on the debit side, so what the seller is owed or a needs, sorry, excuse me, what the seller needs to pay on the debit side would include things like any taxes owed for the period that they owned it, the title charges, again, how you negotiated that um, between the buyer and the seller, the commission to the realtors is typically paid by the seller, um, but again, that's negotiable in your contract, uh, the payoff of the loan if they have a loan on that property, um, the survey, which is again a, no a negotiable item per your contract, um, but typically properties will need to have a survey done um, and often that is paid by the seller, but again, it depends on your location and your contract. Um, and the seller will have to pay for any utilities that they are, um, that they have um, incurred and not already paid. And finally, we have the credit to the seller, and typically that's gonna be the sales price. So the price of the property will go as um, money owed to the seller. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Um, again, this is just a really general overview, but just kind of the major elements of um, your settlement and or your closing costs. So be sure it's something that you're paying attention to when you're going into a transaction. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, again, you can leave comments, leave feedback on this um, site or go to my website, lsiebel.com and you can always contact me via email or telephone. So I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.